Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Thursday night, Friday, right around the corner here tomorrow. Uh, it is about 11.10 p.m. here, California time, on November 16th, 2023. The latest earthquake shows a 3.3 down here along this section of the plate. Also, a little bit of movement uh, a little bit further up along that plate boundary. That's the latest activity here. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here for the Iceland folks. Now, we haven't seen any update today from them, which is a little odd. Uh, over the past you know, few days when this stuff has been uh, taking place, as far as the eruptive potential up there at the Grindavik area of Iceland, they've been putting out updates every day, but it uh, doesn't look like they put out, out one today. So that means that things are probably just neutral right now. Uh, we'll see if they put an update out tomorrow. Current earthquake activity around the Grindavik area uh, about the same, uh, although a little drop. Let me show you guys about 96 earthquakes here in the last six hours. It's still dropping, uh, but you notice we're still seeing some earthquake activity down here, including um, it looks like we had a three-pointer in there, or close to a three-pointer. 2.9, uh, that is north of the uh, Grindavik area of Iceland. Uh, looks like potentially magma could be uh, stirring up further to the north here uh, so we'll have to continue to watch that but no major changes yet and the seismograph station there at the Iceland area uh, around this is just north of the Grindvik area of Iceland uh, looks calm for now so not a whole lot of activity stirring up at least not anything elevated for now all right, uh, we did see some movement over here into the area around the Java Sea. I think we see, let me go over here to the Earthquake 3D Globe. I think we're missing one, aren't we? Yeah, well, there's a couple earthquakes going up here around the Myanmar region, including a 5.7. Uh, and I believe that's on that side. Yep, 5.7 and a 4.5. A couple other earthquakes in here as well. This is uh, off of the plate boundary, uh, fairly shallow. Uh, historical data in this area. I know we can uh, get quite a few large earthquakes out here within this region uh, away from the plate boundary itself and that uh, obviously shows out there across those mountain ranges above 6.0 as well within this region. Uh, but for now a 5.7 and a couple other smaller quakes in the mix there around the Myanmar area. Did not mean to open that. Meant to open the uh, earthquake 3D globe right here. Uh, also out here into the Indian Ocean had a little bit of activity stirring up out here. Um, 4.9 earthquake out here in the Carlsberg Ridge. Uh, but I think, well, let's see here. USGS reporting a 4.9. EMSC looks like they're reporting a 5.3 in this area. Either way, definitely some movement going on out there. Uh, creating that little zipper. You can see the zipper effect out here. I kind of call this stair-stepping event as well. These are all fracture zones out there in the uh, oceanic crust. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, fairly active across the region of Papua New Guinea as well throughout the afternoon time period. Uh, as you can see here on the Earthquake 3D globe, got quite the cluster, goodness, of earthquake activity going on. Roughly Taiwan southward through the Philippines. And just clustering across this area. This is the last, uh, yeah, let's make sure we got the last 24 hours or so on the globe. I believe that's going to be it. Not a whole lot going on up through the Pacific uh, northwestern corner here of that plate. A little bit of movement there in uh, Alaska, the Aleutian Trench area. Back over here across the Fiji region and uh, Tonga Trench quiet for now uh, this will probably fill in overnight um, it just always tends to happen that way we get uh, deeper activity triggering up here or down here that's followed up by days of uh, further pressure and earthquake activity across this trench zone and now we're getting that movement up around the Myanmar area we should see things fill in uh, across this area tonight potentially up here as well it's been somewhat quiet here across the Kuro Kamachaka and the Japan region and uh, I think more so across the Mariana Trench. This is the last seven days of activity. Notice only a handful of earthquakes here across the Mariana Trench in the Izu Trench area. So that could fill in. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, New Zealand, nothing. Zip zero, nada. 
Uh, let's see what the GeoNet servers are reporting for that area. Uh, two hours ago, 2.7. Aside from that, I'm sure some smaller microquakes out there across this area of New Zealand, but it uh, doesn't look like there's a whole lot of activity here uh, across the area for now. Dead. Quiet. Goodness. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the West Coast. Did have a little, little earthquake activity up into the Washington region earlier. Seen this coming in to the Mount St. Helens seismograph station. I thought it was Mount St. Helens earthquake, but it wasn't. It was way north of here, I believe. A 3.1 um, showing up. I believe that's what we've seen earlier. Because uh, this 3.1 came in uh, just a few minutes later following that seismograph reading. Now, Ma Mount St. Helens still seeing some earthquake activity out here. Nothing big, but a handful of earthquakes. Uh, this has been part of an ongoing swarm of activity out here in this uh, area of the Cascades. The volcano itself currently sits as a green, which is normal. Um, let's go ahead and check out... Um, this gas station here, gas station, gas monitoring station here. See if we got anything elevated going on across this area. Uh, every, at least to me, everything looks normal, neutral. Not a whole lot of elevated activity across the sulfur dioxide uh, or the. Let's see what else we got here. Hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, everything looks uh, for the most part fairly quiet not a whole lot uh, coming in there most of these earthquakes have been occurring down below the surface areas um, a couple kilometers or so there's some of that activity showing up uh, in the last 24 hours but to me and to me this is this is going to be that three-pointer I believe that kicked up north of that region uh, in the northern Washington earlier this afternoon my time but uh, as you can see um, Quite a bit of uh, small spikes out here across the last 24 hours, and that's a uh, that's a little bit more than what they're showing up here, right? These guys only showing about seven earthquakes here. I can probably count a lot more uh, than seven earthquakes on this map of the Mount St. Helens seismograph station. So we'll continue to watch that, but uh, just for now, a little bit of earthquake activity, and it's been that way here for the past oh almost two months now, off and on earthquake activity. All right, uh, further down south into Northern California, not a whole lot going on, a little spotty. Let me check out the trimmer map here tonight before I forget about it. Cascadia trimmer, 30, oh, look at 30 epicenters of trimmer. There's a little, that's a little odd here to see a line like that uh, across that area. Most of the time it's cluttered into one region. Uh, that's a little, little odd looking, but uh, either way, only 30 epicenters of trimmer down into the Cascadia. A little bit into Northern California as well, but nothing, uh, nothing major going on there for now. Uh, West Coast, California, looks about the same as it did this morning. Not a whole lot of movement going on there. Some microquake activity, but that's about it. Movement outside of Las Vegas, handful of earthquakes, generally small microquakes there. Not a whole lot going on through Yellowstone. And uh, let's give a, just a quick glance here at the Yellowstone overview. And uh, no earthquake swarm, no major unusual activity, no magma movement. All right, uh, Texas filling in quite nicely here, it looks like, tonight with quite a few earthquakes outside of Pecos, Texas. And the oil fields out there, quite a bit of uh, earthquake activity stirring up out there in the last few weeks. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, another volcano area. We're kind of watching the Kilauea Volcano. Nothing, uh, I don't think we're seeing anything new going on here. In fact, things look like they're toning down here across the area of the volcano uh, region. Check out the tilt meter, see what's going on. Last two days, there's our deflation event. Now, we're going to have to watch this, see if, see if this comes back up tomorrow. Uh, because if we look at the past trends here, we've seen inflation events for a few days followed by subsequent deflation for a couple days so if this continues to go down through tomorrow then we may not see this come back up but we'll have to check back uh, sometime midday tomorrow see if this starts to go back up potentially for an inflation event it's just been the trend here this past 30 days of inflation across the summit area 
Uh, earthquake activity. Let's see what we got um, here real quick. Not a whole lot. Look at that. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity whatsoever there across the big island for now. All right, uh, space weather activity. Well, looks like maybe we're going to get a G1 class storm here in a couple days. Uh, we'll have to come back and check on that as we get closer to that time period. Uh, not a whole lot of flaring going on. In fact, we are below the sea flare category once again, dipping back into very minimal conditions, unfortunately. We did see a little bit of sea flare activity earlier from a far side sunspot region, and that was uh, right around here. It still looks somewhat active, but uh, let's see, what do we got? 90% chance for a sea flare, M flare at 15%, and of course, less than 1% for the majority of the uh, remainder. Now, the area of interest is going to be down here. Um, I wouldn't count on any of these sunspots that are facing the Earth right now uh, for any strong flaring. These are going to be out of sight, out of mind. And uh, we've got to watch the sunspot down here, see if it wants to pick up the solar uh, weather activity here in the coming days. But uh, I don't know. I don't see that really happening yet. Uh, the sun's kind of going through a weird phase of uh, quietness currently. Uh, but we'll check back on that uh, potential auroras coming up here around the 19th or so. All right, uh, what else we got? Storm Prediction Center, anything major going on here for severe weather? Not over the next couple days, but we'll watch this severe weather event Monday or Tuesday. It looks like things are setting up there in the portions of the Southern Plains and eventually the South over here on day five. We'll come back and check on that as we get closer to that time period. As uh, far as the assembles go, this gives us a good indicator where high pressure is building and low pressure troughing is occurring. Well, as we head into the weekend, we do have some rain out here across the west coast. Um, and that's going to be about it. Um, with low pressure, it looks like building into a good portion. Oh gosh, this is a horrible high pressure out here, dominant into the Washington area. That normally means some above temperatures and that's going to include california as well unfortunately so for thanksgiving there's kind of a big chill going on out here uh, across the great lakes area and a good portion of the eastern part of the country and we're left with some high and dry conditions unfortunately uh, i do not like that dominant high pressure out there let me go over here and check out the uh, north american region see what's going on so there's our weekend storm that gets kicked up. Massive tr uh, high pressure building it looks like there across the Gulf of Alaska. I'm hoping that goes away. Kind of looks like it does as we head towards November. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens as we head into December. It's just kind of an odd year. El Nino, uh, strong El Nino event uh, going into this winter. So we, we should see storms start kicking up here across this area of the west coast california hopefully fingers crossed that is for sure all right uh anything else we miss out here i, I mean there's obviously a lot of earthquake activity all over the place as far as any unusual activity going on i'm um, not really seeing it too much uh, and with the iceland activity we'll just kind of continue to watch that somebody's reporting a 4.3 there into the Iceland area. Now, I didn't see that showing up here. 4.3, that's a 2.9. 2. Six hours, I wonder if it was beyond six hours, maybe 12, hour, 12 hours ago? I don't see it, so I'm not for sure who's reporting the uh, that uh, larger quake out here. Either way, um, it looks as though, at least for now, earthquake activity is dying down. There's obviously still magma. Um, underneath this area of the Grindavik, Iceland region. Uh, but for now, most of the earthquake activity and swarming and magma movement uh, appears to be uh, migrating towards the northeast. Now, that could be good news for the folks down here, but we'll, we don't want to get too excited yet. We'll continue to watch that and report back on any major changes. Hopefully, they'll come out with an update tomorrow. That's going to be the Icelandic Met Office. Uh, these folks have been pretty adamant about putting out daily updates, except for today. It's just a little, a little odd. 
All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good night. Live seismograph stations are up on the live stream, and they all look calm for now. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow, Friday. Have a good one.